Hi everyone, I'm Zez and I am in basically the countryside of Japan right now. I'm way outside of the center of Tokyo and I'm on my hard off hunting mission for the next three weeks. So the way I do this is I just get on a train in the morning and I go to the furthest hard off possible. This morning I went two hours uh, in the southwest of Tokyo. I've been to two stores already and now I'm walking to the next one. It's in Chigasa Chigasawa? Chigasaku. Wait. Chigasaki. Yes. That's where I'm going right now. It's a really nice walk. Uh, I'm not that far away actually from Mount Fuji. It's sort of straight back that way, but there was a big storm before and it's now gone over the mountain. So what happened to me? Uh, as soon as I got off the plane, yesterday in Tokyo Haneda Airport is a camera crew came up to me like Vox Pop with a microphone and they're like can we ask you questions about why you come to Japan and I went yeah I'm like 18 hours of a flight I'm delirious I haven't slept I'm like sure and I explained to them I'm going to hard off stores that's all I do I go around and I get to do stuff like this just walk through the Japanese countryside and see stuff and they were fascinated by my story. So now the director's been messaging me and they want to come to a hard off store with me tomorrow and they want to film me going around a hard off. I don't know what the hell. It, it sounds like it's going to be a version. You know that show on Netflix with the little Japanese kids called Old Enough and they send them to the store and have the camera people run after them? It sounds like it's going to be that, but we're going to be in a hard off and it's going to be a big dumb foreigner. I don't know what's up. Look, it's TV. I don't know if it's all going to come through, but that's the plan for tomorrow. I'd literally been off the plane for five minutes. Oh my God. Uh, I knew I wanted to record in Japan. I didn't know I'd be recording that quickly. Today, I'm on my own adventure here. I'm walking to the next store. I've got my little backpack. I've got some pickups that I've already taken. So what I'm going to do in this video is after this, I'm going to give you the t store tour from Chigasaki doing my best Jim Shoruken uh, Kid Shoruken impersonation. I'm going to do the voiceover later. We're going to go through the store. And then after that, I'm going to do a quick pickups showing you what I got today. This is my first video in Japan. I think I'm still jet lagged. I'm going nuts. So uh, let's just do it. Here we are at Hard Off Chig Asaki. I've been here three or four times before. Like, never a place that I think like, oh, I got that golden thing, but always something good. I like this red, the candy red. What is it called? Nin red Nintendo. What's that? About 60 euros or so. Nicely packaged. If you wanted one of those, that I think that'd be a good deal for it. PS4s are very similar to the price at home. There's really no, unless you found some crazy uh, good price. They're still really current. They're about the same price I've seen everywhere else. So I wouldn't bother bringing one home from Japan. Very nice boxed Famicom there. It's funny how those Famicoms, Super Famicoms, they have different panels that age at different speeds. And those those uh, Famicom AVs are really getting up in price. 9,900. Almost 100 bucks, 80 bucks. Got the round satin pad. I have one of these, but that's the box. That's the box that... Uh, Japanese satin stuff came and I kind of like that black and red or red and white kind of style. A couple of 3DOs. I'm not really a 3DO guy. Well, you know, 13. So what's that? A little over 100, 100 bucks, something like that. If you want that, I, I would pay that if I was in the market for that. And also the, the Sega, the Mega Drives, they're really drying up. That one doesn't even have a genuine pad with it. Uh, Satin as well. They've always been a little bit more. I mean, that's what Hard Off does. They'll put like a few good ones on the shelf, but you go out to the junk pile, you'll find a few more. I like this hefty bad boy. Rap 4 PS4. It's got the Habadusa gear inside of it. That was the that's the buttons that when Hori didn't want to pay Sanwa, I guess, so they just put their own copycat buttons in instead. Moving to out the back, we've got the junk section. What is this? It looks like a microwave, but it's a CRT. Hey, there I am. But there's a weird camera. Is that a camera? Off some sort of camera there? And but then that thing... Wait, that thing that flips out. See, check it out. That's a mirror. That's not see-through. I have no idea what this thing is, but it's big and heavy. And there's not many CRTs at Hard Off in general. Look at this. Mr. Nello, it was called something like this. So it's Sony, it's a CRT, 
Mr. Nello. What the hell is this thing? Desi I mean, looks cool as hell. If it 30% off, I guess it doesn't work. This is something I should buy and ship over to Steve from Retrotech. You get this thing going again, buddy. You've got a museum piece. It looks real nice. Maybe I'll go back for it. Now I'm... It's one of those ones I might go for back, back for at the very end. That's an LCD, but what I couldn't work out about this toaster design, yeah, it takes a battery battery pack, and that's a VHS. So that opens up like a cassette player. VHS HQ, maybe it's VHS, I'm not sure. VHS S, what was the what was the S video version? Not a little cute. Black and white CRT, not many of them at hard off. Laser disc player. Look at and this is OG stuff too. This has got to be one of the early pioneer ones. Uh, they give you a little label and it tells you what's wrong with it. And it's quite handy to use the Google Translate app because it's printed. It's not handwriting. Handwriting is really hard for the camera, for that Google AI to work out, but printing. So you can often work out what's up with it. And sometimes it says, hey, it's fine. It's just here. And other times it's got issues. That's a Betamax player. Look at that thing. That's, it looks like it came from the Soviet Union. Look how thick and metal and heavy Betamax X2. They had two of them there, both for 2200 so like 19 18 bucks or something. That's another one of those ones if you were there. Goddamn, you, you pick it up just to test it. And this one confused me. A private cinema system with PS2? I didn't see anything about PlayStation 2, so unless they're just saying, hey, you can also hook it up to your PS2. And that's uh, my, that's an ASCII grip. I'll show you a little bit more about that later in the pickups video. It's a one-handed controller for a PS1. Down there, we're in the junk pile. Oh yeah, just a little VGA to, to, comp to component breakout cable, but simple, very good for Mr. I was hoping to get that one. And just boxes of junk. Now we're going through the goods. Cables. You want Wii cables? We got Wii cables. We got everything going on here. You want Wii motes? This is just one. Every store has a bin full of Wii motes. For the standard, you're going to pay about, what, 500 for a good one? Maybe 12 bucks for one of the later ones. Spice Orange GC, yeah, a lot of those in there, they, you got to watch the sticks on them. I guess if you can replace the sticks, you're in luck. That one had a pretty good stick. 1500, like the stick, as long as the stick feels good, you can pull it apart, put the little caps, the yellow cap and the gray cap back on. As long as it's not a stick drift and it's like, this one was a bit, no, that one's very good. So again, I could have got this. This was a thousand yen or something like that. Yeah, 1000 yen. That's eight bucks for that. That was fine. But how many GameCube controllers do I really need? Well, don't answer that question. Yeah, I like that one with the clear back as well, but it had a really broken stick. And I'd already bought too much crap today. All PS controllers, mainly PS3 in there. This is the ASCII PlayStation stick. It's beaten up one too. And they wanted 30, 3,300 to like 25 bucks. Too much. It's broken, a dirty ass. The button, the stick didn't work properly. It's clearly just been hanging around. But I forgot, you know, that that that, that ASCII had made a PS, had made a Dreamcast stick. You got rows and stacks and stacks of PlayStation ones. You got Wii's there as well. Wii's are the new PlayStations. You are gonna see bins and bins full of Wii's. It was a huge first day in Tokyo for me. I walked 15 kilometers and I went to three hard offs. And I found a book off in there as well. I'm going to show you my pickups. We're going to start with the games because there's a generational shift happening there. Three years ago, four years ago, we were talking Saturn a lot. We were talking Dreamcast. Even Mega Drive was around. Look, I'm still seeing that stuff. It's not here, but clearly the new generation has kicked in in the last three years. We're looking at Wii, Wii U, PS2. It's always been huge, but now it's even bigger. You see that next generation of retro coming along. So I picked up, first of all, Tatsunoko versus Capcom. This was 900 yen or something like, what, six bucks or something like seven bucks. Love this game. Um, it For me, it's like the advanced, one of the advanced fighters, but because it's on the Wii, it's got an easy mode that you can play with the Wii mode with just two buttons. I was playing it with my 10-year-old nephew. He loved it. I'm really enjoying it. Um, Smash, Smash Brawl and Smash for the Wii U. Both of these were 500 yen, so about three, three bucks 50 each. I can't believe they're so cheap. 
Um, usually Smash goes for a lot, but these are really, really good value right now. So no problems. Happy to pick up these two. And Super Mario Sunshine on the GameCube, 500 yen again, three bucks 50. I know Mario is pretty common, but wow, to get three bucks 50 for Super Mario Sunshine. Look, I like it. All right, a few of the controllers that I got, your standard PS3, these are really common these days. They're everywhere. This is 800 yen. Uh, look, I don't think even in the junk bin, there's that much wrong with them. I think there's so many of them that they're just putting them there. Uh, I'm gonna stock up a few more of these, these six axis ones, uh, DualShock 3 before I go home. They're good. Got the one-handed uh, ASCII grip controller. So it's a PS1 controller and you can play it with one hand. A lot of people have talked about this. This one's a little yellowed, but was only 500 yen, 350 dollars. So why not? If I find another one that's a good price, um, I think I will if it's not yellowed, but I'm going to pick it up anyway. Hori GC controller. This is in the junk bin as well. And I know why. See, there's no cap on that. That's come off. This button... The B button is down pressed and the buttons are sticky and that cap is, I reckon this will clean up well. This should cost a lot more. This should cost 20 or 30 bucks or something. And I think all I'm gonna need to do is open it up, clean it out, probably replace that cap, but I can keep the stick. The stick underneath is good. Both sticks are good. So that was a bargain. I don't know how much that was, a couple of bucks. That was a bargain. Gun Con 2. You can use this with your mister now because this is the second Gun Con. It's got the USB and support was added to the Mr. FPGA not long ago. I've been looking for one of these. If you want to import it, it's 30 bucks or something like that. Here, this was 500 yen, 350 for that. I'm a big fan. I've got mini discs at home and cassettes. So I've been buying up the mini discs. I've got a pack of 12 there and also a few singles. Singles go for 300 yen or about $2 each here. So I'm gonna fill, get my fill of those. and. If you want old magnetic media, Japan is the place to go. Cassette tapes, um, Type 2, 90 minutes, TDK, good brand, 800 yen, so about five bucks. Tapes are getting up there in price. It's type 1, very easy to find. Type 2 and metal, oh my God, metal, very expensive. And just for fun, VHSC. I've got a VHSC camcorder at home. Uh, I picked up these, that was 300 yen, and it's been sitting there for a million years because nobody wants that kind of junk. They're my pickups for day one. I got a few other and cables and everything you need. When you come into Japan, all right, don't worry about bringing a charger or your cables. I mean, do, but you'll be able to find everything you want here. Uh, I got like, you know, you gotta have typical power plugs and the power adapter you gotta plug it in. Sure, get a couple just to be safe, but you go to the first hard off, there's a thousand USB chargers, USB-C for a couple of bucks, and then you don't need the, the charger and you're good to go. So that's my day one pickup. Thanks very much uh, for watching. I've, I've got 23 more days here. So uh, you'll be seeing soon. Please like and subscribe because I'm here for a long time. I'm gonna be making more Japanese content. I'm Lewis from Zez Retro. See you soon. Thank you.